Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. You know that we would love to hear from you. So send us an email with your question or your comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com. And today we are thrilled to have Brian Espy and Alejandra Lewis. They're going to be with us today and they're from a beautiful ministry called Life on Wheels. Now Life on Wheels is on a mission to serve women, save babies, share Jesus through the power of ultrasound. You could go out to their website, lifeonwheelsalabama.com. So we are excited. We, we are. are um, our spirits are the same, right? Yeah. Our hearts burn for the same passion of loving women, taking yeah. care of babies, and bringing women everything that is good and true and beautiful about Jesus yeah. and helping them to be the best version of themselves. So we're excited to have this Absolutely. people on with and us it's today. It's so evangelistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, life on wheels are these beautiful, more than vans. I mean, right. it's just gigantic with ultrasound machines in them. And they're not waiting for people to come to them. They're going out to the streets, out to the highways and the byways. Anybody who has an evangelistic heart in our evangelical community or Catholic community, you know what we're talking about. And we know what the Pope, St. Francis, St. Francis, he's not a saint yet, Pope Francis, <laughs> Pope Francis said, he says, you know, you need to get out into the highways and the byways. You need to get out into the peripheries don't wait for people to come to you. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about the sanctity of human life. Give them the resources they need. And that's what Life on Wheels uh, does. So we'll be sharing more about this. It's an incredibly exciting ministry. Lives and souls are being saved. Women's true femininity is being affirmed. Mm, yes. And uh, the gospel is going forth. So we'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, we are thrilled to have this dynamic duo, Brian Espy and Alejandra Lewis. They're from a beautiful ministry called Life on Wheels. Now, Life on Wheels is on a mission to serve women, save babies, and share Jesus through the power of ultrasound. You can go out to their website, lifeonwheelsalabama.com. Well, it's fun to have the both of you here today. And we first, we're, I'm excited to be able to tell about your beautiful ministry and all that you're doing. Um, but I want you first to tell our family a little bit about yourself, Alejandra, and how you got involved with Life on Wheels. All right. Well, um, I am originally from Mexico City, and I moved here to the States um, about 15 years ago. And I've always been very passionate about the pro-life ministry. I am married and I have two wonderful children and they love serving with me in this mm -hmm. ministry as yeah. well. Good. What's your position yeah. with the ministry? I am the Director of Ministry and Development for Birmingham. Okay. Wonderful. Yes. Perfect. And Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, as you know, I'm Brian Espy and uh, grew up in Southwest Georgia, Albany area and went to school at Auburn where I met my wife, Christy. Um, and then she and I are, uh, have raised our family in Millbrook, Alabama. I've worked for the state of Alabama now for, gosh, almost 24 years as an environmental engineer. And um, I guess God spoke to me in a, in a way that's, that's really kind of unique. Uh, and that's really kind of how, between that and 40 Days for Life and Dr. Matt Phillips and and a lot of moving parts that really shows that God is in this thing. Um, that's how we got to where we got as far as life on wheels. And then I, I guess I failed to mention, I do have three wonderful children. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've got a uh, eight year old, a 14 year old, both of them uh, boys and a 16 year old girl. So 
uh, got a handful and, and wouldn't change a thing. Well, good, and I'm sure it keeps you prayerful. Oh, no, definitely, <laughs> definitely. So how, how did this <clears throat> vision take place for this type of ministry? We understand a lot about pregnancy medical centers, crisis pregnancy centers, and so on, but uh, not many people have heard about what you all are doing. How was that planted? in Dr. Phillip's heart or your heart or how well, does it take place? Well, uh, it, it, it actually started uh, in, I guess, my heart and it's, and it's kind of a funny story. Actually, I brought a cheat sheet with me because I thought you might ask that question <laughs> uh, just to make sure that I got my dates right and so forth. But Christy and I went through a tough time and we actually uh, had triplets um, in February of 2013 and we lost all of them. So um, and it was a difficult time and and just uh, Dr. Matt Phillips was our doctor at the time. Oh. And in fact, uh, there was one hospital in UAB that for the life of the mother wanted to go ahead and abort and so forth. And Dr. Phillips, uh, he sat there with us day after day and, and saw the, the babies slowly perish over a period of time. And you kind of wonder when you go through stuff like that, you know, you ask God, you know, why? Yeah. Um, and so forth, well, fast forward, and um, I had gone to a Ducks Unlimited banquet. Christy and I run a business in Argentina, MGW Outfitters, where we do a hunting and so forth. And I had donated a hunt for the Ducks Unlimited banquet in Birmingham. I went to that banquet. They raised over $300,000 for ducks. And, and I'm a big conservationist, first off. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tell you. Mm -hmm. and, and some of my money certainly goes to conservation. But I was like, gosh, $300,000 were just raised for ducks. Mm -hmm. And I came home and I told Christy, and that night, uh, there's a song that I love, and I sing the choir and so forth, and it's, uh, you know, here I am, Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, and I felt God touching my heart. And I woke up and I said, Christy, I said, you're going to think this is crazy? I said, but I'm going to call up the director of the local pregnancy center. So mm -hmm. I call up in River Ridge Pregnancy Center in Prattville, Alabama. I cold call and asked to speak with the director. Tell her, I said, I really need to talk to you. I'd like to take you out to lunch. She, thankfully, she agreed. We went up to Jim and Nick's. And I said, <laughs> I want to do the thing that's gonna make the biggest difference in the river region to make the biggest impact and save babies and save lives. And she goes, well, that's really expensive. And I said, well, I just saw $300,000 get mm -hmm. raised for ducks. Mm -hmm. And I said, certainly people will do the exact same thing, if not more, for humans, for humanity. And she goes, and she, hand me this pamphlet, and it talks about a mobile unit. ICU mobile is what it talked about and so forth. And she goes, you know, they're $200,000, $250,000. And I said, I saw people raise money for ducks, mm -hmm. $300,000 <laughs> in one night. Mm -hmm. By golly, we can do this and we can make a difference. So the next thing is uh, Christy ends up um, pregnant with our next child, who's Patrick. Uh, he's eight now. And so in, let's see, the Ducks Unlimited Banquet was November 14. Um, I was reading, oh, 40 Days for Life. I was reading the book, 40 Days for Life, and Matt walks in the door. It was an OB appointment. And he goes, oh, 40 Days for Life. Christy's like, she said, y'all just ignored me. She said, that, 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 was supposed to, that, whole, that whole appointment was, was supposed to be for me. You just ignored me. Because all of a sudden, this whole conversation, he, go, and he went from 40 days for life to why in the world in Montgomery, Alabama, do we not have a mobile ultrasound unit? Matt mm -hmm. stops in his tracks because his family comes from his mother, especially, very involved with the pro-life movement mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth. And um, he goes, well, that's just too expensive. I said, Matt. I said, let's do something. I said, I saw $300,000 get raised for ducks in Birmingham, mm -hmm. Alabama. Mm -hmm. And um, Not that we're putting down ducks. <laughs> no, no, no. And I'm not, I'm a, I am a member of Ducks Unlimited. I'm a member of Ducks Unlimited. I'm a member of National Wild Turkey But we got to yes. do it for babies. But we got to do mm -hmm. it for babies. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Matt grew up in Montgomery, knows everybody. And uh, we end up having a meeting at his mother's house. And it was a probably 20 people and we start brainstorming. Later on that fall, we have a gala and I told Matt, I said, I'm gonna raise $300,000 for ducks. Well, we raised about $85,000 mm -hmm. is what we ended up um, uh, netting. And I remember I came up to Matt afterwards and I apologized. 
and I said, Matt, I said, I knew, you know, because a mobile ultrasound unit, uh, a mobile unit is about 250000 mm -hmm. and then on top of that, you got the ultrasounds, you know, 30000 Right. And he was so excited about, and everybody was so excited and uh, about raising that much money. I was like, but we can't do anything with $85,000. Nine months later, mm -hmm. kind of significant. As God would have as it. As God would <laughs> have it. We raised enough money for the ultrasound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we... That's good. We hit the road on December 26th. Yeah. Um, or not, I think it was, I'm sorry. That's okay, you hit the road. <laughs> December 27th, 2016, mm -hmm. we had the first bus run. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. And we parked outside the um, abortion clinic in Montgomery, and we started saving babies. Yeah. Amen. And 89% of all those women who uh, got on our bus and was abortion-minded, they, uh, they took they chose life. Mm -hmm. And I got a, and I got a picture mm -hmm. just recently of one of those children starting kindergarten. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's and the reality. Now. Yeah. Anyway, and we're up to four buses now. Right. So, uh, man, if this world could have buses all over, partner with ultras, I mean, partner with uh, all the different crisis pregnancy centers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what a difference. It, you know, and we don't yell at women. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we just love them. Right. You know, we well, you open Jesus. your door and they're showing an image of a, a beautiful ultrasound. And what it is, it's an RV, right? And so women come in and they're like, what is happening? Because you are going to where they are. You're at, now in the state of Alabama, there aren't any up and running abortion clinics, to God be the glory. But are girls still having abortions in the state of Alabama? Yes, they are. Are they, because the law supposedly is to be a teacher and it's to change our hearts. But just because it's illegal doesn't mean anyone's hearts have changed. So tell us, tell our family where this mobile unit goes. So this mobile unit goes out where? Is it just one mobile unit? Well, we have one mobile unit in okay. Montgomery. We have two in Birmingham and one in Tuscaloosa. Mm -hmm. And the way it operates, we go to places that are very um, easy to reach, uh, the women that are uninsured in a moment of crisis. And the way it works is they don't need to have an appointment. They just come to us. And we try to park in a very accessible place. Usually it's the parking lot of a Walmart and very close to a bus stop. So they come in, no appointment needed, and it goes very smooth. It's mm -hmm. an appointment where we love on them. We, it, they, it takes only like 45 minutes. Yeah. And what we do is limited ultrasounds. But like you were saying, our mission statement is that with a power of ultrasound, we serve women, we save babies, and we share Jesus. So we want to serve them. So we provide the free pregnancy test and the ultrasound. And after that, we provide many resources. Mm -hmm. um, as of today, we've seen almost 1,000 clients. Mm -hmm. Just and, in Birmingham? Uh, no, general. Okay. In general, mm -hmm. we've mm -hmm. seen almost 1,000 clients just this year. Mm -hmm. But with those clients, it's not that we just provided a service. We try for them to connect with the pregnancy centers and provide resources. Uh, we've shared the gospel f with 500 women that mm -hmm. probably they've never heard about the Lord or mm -hmm. they're just, um, you know, in a vulnerable place. And going back to your, your question about the abortion, it is happening. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as drugs. Drugs right. are out there. The mm -hmm. fact that they're illegal doesn't mean that they're not going to get them. Right. Um, so it is imperative for us to reach out to those women so we can help them mm -hmm. in serving them and telling them, you know, what abortion really is, that there is hope out yeah. there, and to give them those resources. Yes. Um, yeah, we, of course, run a pregnancy medical center. Joy is the executive director of that. And it's just really amazing. I mean, we've had almost abortion on demand in, in some states. And then we've banned abortion, surgical abortion, and chemical abortion. But it doesn't stop the pill to abort children from still getting to these women. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing so many people that have taken the pill, have they gotten the pill, 
there's advertisements on ways to get the pill, maybe not in the state, but how you set this up so that you can get it. Other people are getting it for the people. And so th it's still happening, as you said. Some people might be thinking, well, uh, Alabama's an abortion-free state. Why is anybody coming to a pregnancy medical center? Why are people even dealing with you? Why aren't they just going to other states? So, so why is it happening that you're seeing as many people as you saw before we banned abortion, or maybe even more? You're What's up with more. that? Mm -hmm. Why? How could you possibly mm -hmm. be seeing more? Why are we seeing more? Well, one thing that we do do, and jump in here, uh, mm -hmm. is we do this, and I'm not this techie guy, but we do geofencing or something mm -hmm. along those lines. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about getting the pill, we, a lot of the, the funds that we have go towards um, this geo thing. You're marketing. Where, yeah, mm -hmm. where you're marketing them, and we're in a certain area, and they type in abortion pill. Right? Mm -hmm. well, Life on Wheels pops up instead right. of, mm -hmm. you know, at, right there at the top, and they're like, oh, I can get some services. It actually says ICU mobile. It doesn't say... So, and we yeah. look very medical. Mm -hmm. We are medical. You are medical. We are medical. <laughs> yeah. And uh, very professional. And so a lot of these girls aren't necessarily in tune with what can and cannot be done yeah. within a particular state. And they show up at our door, knocking on the door, right. looking for help. Yeah. And it gives us that opportunity to be able to minister to them, be able to provide that ultrasound yeah. and hopefully change that family tree. What do you have mm -hmm. on the mobile unit? Do you have something about free pregnancy tests or whatever? Well, what does it say? We do. I mean, on the outside, yeah. it looks like just image clear ultrasound, yeah. but it says free pregnancy yeah. test and free ultrasounds. Right. Well, um, you know, I mean, you've just got so many women who are pregnant. Mm -hmm. Who's not going to who's going to turn mm -hmm. down a free ultrasound? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. So some of these women are, are, are saying, you know, I'm glad that I'm pregnant. I'm married. Others, I'm glad I'm pregnant. I'm not married. You can share with them about a number of things. Then you got those that saying, I want this ultrasound because I know what's going on in our country and I can't get an abortion in Alabama, but I sh should go over to Atlanta or F Florida or North Carolina or whatever. Right. I want to know the gestational age of this baby. That's exactly right. So mm -hmm. that I can go to different places. So they're coming to you. And so, yeah, I mean, and morality, the overturning of Roe versus Wade, I don't know how much it's done in terms of changing morality of people. I, I, we don't see all that much of it, but, well, we're going to go to a break, believe it or not. <laughs> I told you this was going to go fast. <laughs> we're going to hold you over for the final segment. Uh, it's Life on Wheels, an incredible, I, I think of it as a, a sanctity of life, evangelistic ministry, going out to the highways and the byways, giving free ultrasounds to any woman who wants it. I don't believe guys really can have an ultrasound mm. for pregnancy, but some people do, I don't. So these women, <laughs> but these women are desires for that and the conversations that are open up, loving of these women, giving them good medical information, saving the lives of these children and, uh, and introducing them to Jesus Christ uh, through their love that they share. We'll be right back, don't go away. Speaking about life on wheels, this life, soul-saving, incredible ministry of going right to the women and people where they are. Uh, Alejandra, share with us a little bit more as we close out the first, the second segment. We were just sharing about the women that are coming and what's going on with it, what's yes. happening, your interaction. A little bit more about that. Okay, so when the lady comes to the bus, she's greeted by a volunteer. So it's imperative also for us to try to get as many volunteers as we can. We have... Um, a nurse or a sonographer, and she's the one that does all of the medical. So the way we start our visit is with this um, lady asking questions like, where is she right, like right now? Is she in a relationship? Is, she, is this a planned pregnancy? Is she in a moment of crisis? Where is her situation? So we can try to provide as many resources and connect with her. And the most important thing is that we're able to reach out to her in this moment when she's going to determine what she's going to do. So going back to what you were saying also about abortions are probably happening or not happening. Right. Yes, and they just want to know how far along they are to see where they are going to go yes. in case they want to terminate their pregnancy. Yeah. So for us, it's the perfect opportunity to pray for them. And a lot of these women, they've never been heard so just by listening to where they are and yeah. their needs, we're able to connect and provide yes. that help. 
And why do you think this is your only option to abort? Right? Like what, that, what led you we, we, to every, that? Every resource mm -hmm. is here for you. Maybe you want to consider these things. Why do you think, why do you feel that that's your only option? You know, because they've taken surveys and done studies, and w many women who've had abortions have said, if I knew one person that would accompany me and tell me about resources, I wouldn't have done what I did. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing. And so many are looking for signs. They're looking for signs, should I abort this baby or not? And then life on wheels pulls up, and it's there, there's your, your sign. Mm -hmm. Brian, we only got a couple of minutes left, but uh, how successful, I mean, you would do it whether nobody, you know, decides for life, but what's the success? What's going on over these years? Well, yeah, over the years, um, documented, yeah. and we follow up with all these women and do the best that we can, but a lot of them we don't hear back mm -hmm. from. But many of them we do, and we get pictures and so forth. But documented, we've saved 446 babies mm -hmm. so far. Yes. So we call that 23 yes. kindergarten classes. Yes, because you have, you know, that's a beautiful word picture. Because when, when you think one life, one life in perspective in the family and what it does, especially when we do adoptions and you see this baby in place with this family and everyone's so happy and excited and so beautiful, mm -hmm. We did one adoption and the couple flew and 77 people showed up at the airport to greet this one adopted baby. Changes the family tree. Everything. And the totally. adopted and the woman who placed her baby up for adoption said to me, Joy, if I would have went home, ain't nobody would have been there for me for that baby. I did the best thing for that child. So sometimes it's it's saving the baby where mm -hmm. they get to live, and then sometimes it's placing them up for adoption. Right. But it's the conversation that we have to have, which you make available to them. And we're kind of we look at ourselves as the ambulance. Mm -hmm. We look at you know, like pre crisis pregnancy centers, like the one that y'all help yeah. operate or operate yeah. as the hospital. Mm -hmm. And so, and we make sure that we place the woman and partner yeah. with all of these different pregnancy centers around and get them to the place that works best for them. And if adoption is the mm -hmm. choice, mm -hmm. that's fine. If keeping the baby or whatever it might be. And, and then we additionally, we follow up after the birth the mm -hmm. best that we can. Some of them, some of the women we don't hear from, mm -hmm. some of the women that we do, but We're it's gonna beautiful. We're going to have to pause mm -hmm. at okay. this point and carry this over until uh, tomorrow. They can't be anything much more important than what you were sharing. Mm -hmm. And I, I was speaking with them and I said, what's the success rate? I, I shouldn't have said that because they're successful every time. Mm. Just for showing up. They may not choose like they're successful because they, they're going out, making that appeal, being the voice of the voiceless mm -hmm. and being help to the helpless. Mm -hmm. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. And you're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.